Hello everybody, Justin from the Joker Poker channel and in today's video we're doing another hand breakdown and this is a spot that a lot of people can find themselves in when they're playing low stakes poker cash games such as 1-2 no limit, 1-3 no limit and even sometimes you can find yourself in this spot in 2 five no limit uh this is a hand from my last session at resorts world where a lot of interesting things were happening there was a maniac who was betting blind almost every hand with for whatever reason for the exception of this one although he does uh something very strange which does affect the course of this hand and how it does get played out and um it's also interesting to see how other players play certain hands pre-flop if that makes sense so with that we'll go ahead and jump into this i'm dealt pocket aces in middle position there is an under the gun open to 17 dollars and uh that's quite a big open the biggest opens you'll see at one three under the gun will be 15 typically but it gets to me and i decide to raise to 50 now, their maniac I was referring to earlier calls out of turn, and then the player immediately behind me says, whoa, I have a hand, right? So she thinks it over for a little bit and decides to call. So the maniac's out of turn call stands, and then the big blind and the original under the gun razor also call. Not an ideal pre-flop scenario to be getting four callers, but that is what happens in this particular hand. So we are going five ways to a flop, which comes king, ten, six, rainbow. Um, so when the big blind and the under the gun player check it to me, I decide to bet $100. It's less than half of the pot. The uh, maniac decides to call out of turn again. And then the player who is immediately behind me decides to jam all in. The maniac calls her all in, gets over to big big blind. He folds the under the gun or initial preflop razor folds. So now it's on me. And yeah, this is just a fold here. Uh, don't see what I'm beating. I am putting my one of these guys on a set. I'm um, not really putting anyone on pocket kings. I mean, nobody's going to be jamming there with ace king. It's just one pair. But it is interesting to see how everything turns out. So it turns out that the player that was immediately behind me had pocket kings. So she flopped top set. And then the maniac who was uh, betting blind in certain hands and calling out a turn in this hand, he's got 10 6 offsuit for uh, bottom to pair so obviously the board runs out and she uh wins a pretty big pot right but um it's just interesting when i look back on this hand of how things typically would have turned out versus how they turned out right so typically in that spot when i three bet to 50 the um villain behind me with the pocket kings is going to be four betting that hand right probably to something like 175 uh the 200 dollars, and then the maniac might just jam it all in because he's there for some action and then you know it would fold back to me then i'm going all in and then th she's going all in and it's just you know a race at that point that's typically what's going to happen with aces and kings you guys know that right so it was pretty interesting that she just called with the pocket kings uh not that it's necessarily uh not that it's necessarily wrong just less optimal if that makes sense so um it, and then when i look back on this also the under the gun player goes to 17 dollars in the open right so um, when I look back on this hand, I'm thinking that the under the gun player probably has a hand like pocket nines or pocket eights, something like that, right? Or, I mean, they could just have just about any pocket pair if they were a looser player, right? Maybe they had uh, pocket sixes or pocket sevens even. And once, um, you know, I three bet and then there's 
um, three callers behind me, well, then that under the gun player is just incentivized the call at that point, right? So, um, but yeah, looking back on the hand, the way I played it, um, probably didn't lose the minimum there, but didn't lose the max. Um, so that's good, right? Because our whole goal when we're playing poker is to win the maximum and lose the minimum, right? So, um, definitely could have lost more if I had bet more, right? So betting less than half of the pot, um, it's kind of that classic move of just seeing where you're at. And obviously when, uh, the villain behind me jams, I'm pretty much dead, <laughs> right? So, um, bet folding was not bad. Obviously the better move in this spot would be to check fold. Um, and so just, uh, you know, kind of, uh, using this as a reference of if you've got pocket aces and a multi-way pot and you've got some kind of crazy maniac behind you and, and things of that nature, um, check folding is going to be better because pocket aces, any of these pocket pairs do not do well in multi-way flops unless you just happen to, uh, flop a set or, um, you're going up against a draw, but typically, um, five way flops are not good for big pocket pairs. So just a good reference point for me in the future, just to know that, you know, if you're five ways into a flop like that, check folding is going to be the better strategy. Um, not that bet folding was the worst strategy, right? Just the, just the least best strategy. So, um, definitely, yeah, <laughs> definitely a dangerous game. And I'm going to be showing some hands, um, more from this session where the maniac does crazy stuff. And, uh, there's actually one where I do get it all in with the maniac. I'll break down that hand in the future. Just, just because it's something interesting to look at again. So, um, so you guys are probably wondering why I haven't been putting out a lot of videos. Um, it's really because uh, I, I've, I got a little bit ran down from working and uh, working on the other channel and working on this channel. So um, I'm just going to be doing uh, more hand breakdowns from this session. I'm not going to do like a big vlog from it. Uh, but it, so... Um, just, uh, looking forward to getting back in there and shooting some more content for you guys. Um, I taken about, uh, want to say two weeks. Yeah. It's about two weeks since I last played poker. So this week I'm probably going to play a session, uh, maybe even two sessions. We'll see. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is in poker or with whatever you're doing in life, uh, don't let yourself get run down. Um, you know, work, work at a good pace. Um, doesn't mean, you know, doesn't mean like kick your feet up and don't work hard. Just make sure that, you know, you're not getting burnt out in the process. So again, uh, thank you guys for watching this video and watching all the previous videos from this channel and from, um, my wife and I's food review channel, Mouthful of Las Vegas. Um, like I said, um, looking forward to putting some more hand breakdowns from this session in the future. If you guys like this content, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more good stuff coming out in the future. And uh, you guys have yourselves a great day.